Hey guys, Jessie here from Urban Legends Antiques, and this week we are talking about my booth bag. What's in my booth bag? And what's in my tool bag? Let's get started. I'll show you guys my bag. This is my little booth bag. Everybody has one of these. If you don't have one, you will, believe me. Um, and in it, I have stuff like, like this. I, ugh. These are just like the little felt pads for your furniture in case they roll off. I have cable ties so I can like anchor stuff sometimes. And these are, they're small. See how small they are compared to my finger? Look how thin and tiny they are. But they still work really, really well. I have plate hangers. You never know when you're gonna need a plate. I'm telling you, this is the re most ridiculous thing, but these plate hangers have saved me. Twine, I have twine in here so I can hang stuff. This stuff is has saved me numerous times. And then I just have like fun little, um, like little decorative things, like I'll stand stuff on here sometimes and the little, like this little bit of like pom-pom trim, I'll just kind of drape over things just to add a little bit of interest and dimension. You don't want everything to be completely flat in your store. Down in the bottom, you dig all the way down. It's like my Mary Poppins bag. Batteries, you never know when you're gonna need batteries. I have measuring tape. And this is a light measuring tape and it's a small one. And this one is easy for me and it fits in my hand really, really well. So make sure you get one that fits in your hand that's your size. Otherwise it's gonna be big and bulky and you're gonna be trying to measure stuff and you won't be able to. So what's in my tool bag? First thing up, my hammer. I don't necessarily uh, nail things into the wall, but on dealer night, we have a chance to like tear down walls and put up like big decorations and stuff like that in our booth. So I like to have the hammer in my tool bag for then, because at that point, people are taking stuff off of their own walls. I can talk to the booth owners on each side of me and let them know, hey, I'm gonna be hanging or I'm gonna be hammering, blah, blah, blah. And then if they need to like move stuff out, we can help them move things away from the wall just while I hammer and then we'll help them move it back. So this is my hammer. I got it in estate sale. It's wood, it's an old craftsman. And the most important thing is that it's a good size for me and it fits in my hand versus Chuck's hammer. This one's like way longer and it's heavier and the grip is not good for me. So I don't like this one, but this works for Chuck, he's 6'3". So he, you know, he's got bigger hands. So he likes this hammer, I like this one. Same thing goes for our drills. These are the different drills. So if you can see like this one's a little bit bigger than this one. This one fits in my hand really well. This one doesn't, and this one's heavier too. So it's a lot of like pressure on my wrist to use this one. I don't like to use this one. I use this one when I'm drilling into the walls. I also have screws. So these ones go into this bag um, when I'm going to the booth just for like quick work to like restage or to hang stuff. And where's the screws I like? And these are the screws that I like, which is probably why they're they're running out in here. I like to screw into my booth wall and not use a hammer because inevitably on the other side of the booth wall is someone else's stuff that can fall off. So I want to be a respectful neighbor to the other people that are sharing booth walls with me and not start banging on the wall and knock stuff off. So that's why I use screws instead of like hammer and nails. And when I take stuff off of the wall, I just take the screws off of the wall and put back in here and reuse them. Our shop, we're lucky enough that they provide us with uh, screws and then one of the booth owners leaves his drill in there. On dealer night though, everyone's using all of the tools so we'll bring in our own. So what else is in my tool bag? This tool bag Chuck made for me. He said that I needed something a little bit more sturdier than my bag because at the time I was just carrying around like a plastic shopping bag. I was just throwing stuff in there and dragging it in and out and it started to tear. So. I honestly, I left the bag in there and then just put it in this cloth bag and I'll carry this around. And then this one, I keep in the trunk of my car just in case I need to use it. We have in here like little button plugs. Sometimes button plugs will pop off of pieces of furniture. And then if I have the paint, I'll repaint it. Sometimes if I know on dealer night that we're gonna be doing something like that, I'll put my paint in here. Um, I have little screwdrivers. I have price tags. Um, this wire, Chuck likes to use this type of wire sometimes to anchor stuff with instead of the zip ties, but he did, like, he's so cute. He tucked some zip ties here 
onto the side for me. <laughs> it's so cute, so sweet. Um, so we can use those. I have, this is like wire cutter and I use this when I'm cutting up my fake flowers. So here's just like, <laughs> I don't know why I left this in here, but I was chopping off all of the flower pieces and then putting them in a vase. I also keep scissors inside of my tool bag. This was a Christmas gift for my daughter. It was really cute. And they're tough enough that they will cut through cardboard. And then on the back right here, if I can get it to pop off. Um... Oh, there I went. So on the back right here, they have like a little um, blade. So that way I can like slice through cardboard as well. And these have been a lifesaver to me. Um, I also have in here, some knobs if somebody wants to switch out knobs sometimes I'll get requests oh I really like that piece but I don't like the knobs then I'll say oh well I have these you want these instead you know just to make the sale and it saved me a couple of times having that stuff this is a spring lock it's three inch and it holds up to 150 pounds so when I'm hanging my chandeliers if I'm gonna hang it in a new spot and I'm not sure if um, like what I have will support it we'll put a support piece in and then we'll use the spring lock so that way when it sells they can just pop it off with a spring lock and pull it down i don't have like a 150 pound chandelier but i think i have one that's like 20 pounds so i just want to make sure that it's secured up there safely and these work really really well so it'll be hanging and then they'll just pop it off of the hook and then bring it down and then they'll just give me this piece back when they're done with it more screwdrivers more pricing things so this right here was what i was talking about on my other video when i was saying i like to use the chalk paint on these so this is from christmas it says shop for my tree i had a christmas tree up that had a bunch of decorations and wine bottle stoppers and stuff like that just like fun little things and i put this up so people would know to buy for my tree because before they just thought it was pretty when i put this up on it then people started shopping from it oh look chuck put a sharpie in here for me oh look at more screws i did have screws in this bag I'm going to put these in one of these little pockets. All right, let me put all of this away. And then I'll show you some of the stuff that I'll tuck in to the, um, I'll take it in and out of the bag as I need it if I'm planning like a big reset and a stage. I forgot these. I had pulled these out. Two different, what are these, wrenches? Pliers? I don't remember what these are called. But this one's Chuck's and this one's mine. This one's heavier. Like the grip on it is thicker than this one. This one, I don't know. I don't know why, like the heavier ones, they just hurt my wrists and I don't like to use them. So I always go with the lighter one. And then another screwdriver, this one has the piece where you can pop it on and off. So you have the Phillips edge and the flat edge. Like I'll bring fabric with me. So the base colors in my shop are black and white and then I like to have metals. I don't kind of switch out the metals, I'll go between gold, iron, brass. Like right now I have brass and gold. I'll like swap in and out different colors of wood and those are my my base colors and then I'll layer in other things around it. It's not farmhouse. It's called high contrast. It's a high contrast style and I mean when you see the videos in my house you see it everywhere. I love the the sharp contrast between the two colors. That's my jam. Um, but anyway so like I like to have fabric and then like here this cool fabric just got like print on it and then I do have some farmhouse. I have the, the gingham check or the buffalo check. And I'll put these out on things, like on tables, and then I'll put other uh, pieces of furniture on top and kind of just like tuck it and drape it so it looks like really pretty. So like for instance, here's my table, right? And then I'll take the fabric and because this is flat and this is flat, it you kind of like lose interest. So I will go here and then kind of stop. So you go like this and then you kind of just bunch it around and it gives a little bit of different interest and movement to your vignette. And then you can even add in like this. And so that's way more interesting to have it like that than to have it just like that. You see that? It's just a way to create layers in, in your shop. Okay, so you can get fabric. I get a lot of my fabric from estate sales. And the other thing that I always get at estate sales besides like my tools and stuff, my old vintage tools is light bulbs. I always buy light bulbs at estate sales. I got this whole bag of light bulbs from an estate sale for five bucks. And 
it's way cheaper doing that than going to the store and buying them. And so see like this one only has one in it. This guy, it has all six, but they're kind of floating around in there. See, this has one, but like this, this is complete. Oh, there's, it's missing one. And um, I love buying light bulbs this way. I always get my light bulbs at estate sales. This is like such a dream. I do sell a lot of lamps and chandeliers and stuff. So I go through light bulbs really, really quickly and I don't want to run out at home because we have a lot of light here too. I love light. I'm always talking about like the glow. I love the glow of a good lamp. And this is another thrift store find. Look at this thrift store uh, find. This one was $5.99 and I mean, it's brand, it's too big for this. Let me see what other lampshades do I have. Here's another lampshade I got from a thrift store. So we'll figure out a way to put this on here. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I like that, but I always get lampshades from, if they're good, if they're good quality like this, I get lampshades from estate sales and thrift stores and I get light bulbs at estate sales all the time. And it's a good cost cutting tip. So um, I would also say, make sure that you take pictures with your phone of your entire booth for a quick inventory. So once you restock your booth, go through and take a couple of photos of it. And then if something comes up missing from your booth, you can go back to your pictures and look at it really quickly and say, okay, this is missing. And if you see it hasn't sold, you can go to the booth owner, or I'm sorry, you can go to the store owner and ask them, hey, you know, I have a piece missing. What is it? Show them a photo, say it was here on this day. And then a lot of times what happens is that it will get like either put into somebody else's booth or it has sold under like another vendor number by mistake and it can be quickly corrected. You don't have to take an individual photo of each piece, but you can step back and take like a large photo and then just zoom in onto the items that are in the photo. Um, all right, that's it. I hope you guys liked this little discussion we had. We talked a lot about booth stuff and booth life, small business stuff. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Like and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Urban Legends Antiques. I have a website with items available for shipping, www.urbanlegendsantiques.com. And this is it for today. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Once again, I'm Jesse from Urban Legends Antiques. I'm taking my tools and my hammer for the ride too. Great, let's just break everything while we're at it.